molecules are everywhere. In this video, we will discuss the molecules which are essential to life. We call them the biomolecules. Let's get to know these biomolecules in this four video mini series, starting with the first one the carbohydrates. Biomolecules are organic molecules which are arranged in a certain manner in order to form a bigger molecule. Biomolecules have the following functions. They act as the essential source of energy for all living organisms. They also act as energy storage. And the last one is they give instructions for different life processes. Biomolecules are classified into four types. We have the carbohydrates, which is the topic for today's video, the lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. Let's get to know the first type of biomolecule, which is the carbohydrates. Carbohydrate is a biomolecule which is composed of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Biomolecules play an important role in organisms because they are the main source of all biological energy. Meaning to say, without this biomolecule, life will cease to exist. Carbohydrates are the most abundant form of biomolecules. Carbohydrates are also called as saccharide. And this word saccharide came from the word saccharon, which means sugar. Hence, whenever you say carbohydrate, it also means sugar because sugar is a carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is a sugar. Carbohydrates are classified into three types depending on how many sugar units they contain. For one sugar unit, we call it monosaccharides and we have three types of them. We have the glucose, fructose, and galactose. The second type of carbohydrate has two sugar units and it is called disaccharide. And we have the sucrose, lactose, and maltose as its examples. For carbohydrates with multiple sugar units, we call them polysaccharides. We have actually a lot of polysaccharides out there, but we will only focus on three, which are the glycogen, the starch, and the cellulose. The first type of carbohydrate is the monosaccharide. It is named as such because it has only one sugar unit. Monosaccharides are the simplest form of sugar because again they contain only one sugar unit. Now since monosaccharides are the simplest form of sugar, they are actually the only one which our body can utilize. And it has a general formula of C6H12O6. Now let's take a look at the three kinds of monosaccharides in nature. We have the glucose, the fructose, and galactose. If you're going to observe the structures in front of you, you will notice that all of them have the same chemical formula but different structures. We call them isomers. We have the glucose which is a six-sided sugar. Galactose is also a six-sided sugar. While fructose is a five-sided sugar. Glucose and galactose might look the same. But if you're going to observe carefully, the OH on this side and the OH on this side, they are of different positions. Likewise, the OH or the hydroxyl on the galactose and the hydroxyl on the glucose on these sides, they are also oriented in different positions. Glucose is also referred as dextrose, and this is the most abundant monosaccharide in nature. This monosaccharide glucose is produced only by plants through the process of photosynthesis. And plants use it in order to store more energy and also as a source of energy. Now for us, glucose is the principal form of sugar found in our bloodstream. Hence, we also call glucose as blood sugar. And this is the structure of a glucose. Take a look. Now as you can see, it has only one sugar unit. And we have two types of glucose, the alpha glucose and the beta glucose. How do they differ from one another? 
they differ in terms of the hydroxyl attached on this side. This glucose here, the alpha, is oriented downward while in beta, it is oriented upward. Now, does it matter if they have different orientation that one is alpha, the other is beta? The answer is yes. Later, you will see that one of them is grass, the other one is bread. Let's continue. The second type of monosaccharide is the galactose. Galactose doesn't occur freely in nature. It means to say that you will not see any organism that produces a pure form of galactose. Galactose can only be produced when you digest a lactose and when that sugar breaks apart, one of its product is a galactose. Milk is rich with galactose and these are the structures of galactose. We have the alpha galactose and the beta galactose. Now again, how do they differ from one another? We can again find it here at this side. In alpha galactose, one, the hydroxyl is oriented downward, while in beta-galactose, it is oriented upward. Now, let's have the last type of monosaccharide, which is the fructose. Fructose is called as such because it is found abundantly in fruits. That is why fructose is also referred as fruit sugar. Now, among the three types of monosaccharides, glucose, galactose, and fructose, Fructose is the sweetest of all, and this monosaccharide is abundant in some examples such as the nectar, honey, sugarcane, and molasses. These are the structures of your fructose. For the alpha fructose, you have the hydroxyl oriented downward, while in beta fructose, the hydroxyl is oriented downward. And it is easy to recognize a fructose compared to the other monosaccharide because this is the only sugar which has five sides. Moving on to the next type of carbohydrates are the disaccharides. Disaccharides are named as such because it is composed of two sugar units linked together or combined together through a bond called glycosidic bond. Let's say for example, you digest a food which has a disaccharide. What your body will do is, once it enters your body, it will break apart the two sugar units in order to have two monosaccharides. Then that's the only time your body can utilize the sugar that you ate. The chemical formula for disaccharides is C12 H22O11. If you will observe the chemical formula for disaccharides, you will notice that most of the numbers are twice as much as in the monosaccharide. Because again, disaccharide has two sugar units. Let's take a look at the formation of a disaccharide. We have here two monosaccharides. What will happen is the hydrogen from the hydroxyl from this side of the first monosaccharide and the hydroxyl from this side of the monosaccharide will bond together to form water. If that happens, the oxygen here who lost hydrogen will be needing one bond, while the carbon here who lost hydroxyl will be needing one bond. Therefore, in order to solve the problem, the carbon here will bond to the hydrogen here forming what we call a glycosidic bond. Now, these are the three types of disaccharides. We have the sucrose, which is a combination of glucose and fructose, the lactose, which is the combination of galactose and glucose, and maltose, which is a combination of two glucose units. And you will notice that it's like two people holding hands. Let's continue with the first type of disaccharide, which is the sucrose. Sucrose came from the French word sucre, which means sugar. And this sucrose is probably the most common sugar in our houses because it is also called as table sugar. That white sugar or brown sugar used in making your coffee, it is a sucrose. Sucrose is abundant in sugar cane. That is why most of the table sugars are made from sugar cane. And again, sucrose is a combination between glucose and fructose in the process called condensation reaction. 
Let's take a look at that reaction. So we have here the glucose and the fructose. And just like what we explained a while ago, the hydrogen from the hydroxyl of this side of glucose and the entire hydroxyl from this carbon of this side of the fructose will be joining together and be removed, represented by this H2O. Hence, what will happen is this oxygen will be needing one bond and this carbon will be needing one bond. And as you can see, the oxygen will bond to that carbon in order to form sucrose. That process again is what we call condensation reaction for the formation of sucrose. The next type of disaccharide is the lactose. Lactose came from the Latin word lact, which means milk. That is why lactose is commonly known as the milk sugar. Since milk has lactose, mammals can produce lactose. Cow's milk has around 4-5% to of lactose, while human milk has around 6-8% to of lactose. Lactose is a combination between glucose and galactose through the process of condensation reaction. Let's take a look at that reaction. We have here the galactose and the glucose. What will happen is the hydroxyl from this side of glucose will be removed while the hydrogen from this side of the glucose will be removed. Water will be removed and you will have the bond between the oxygen and the carbon between the two sugar units. The last type of disaccharide is the maltose. Maltose is commonly known as malt sugar because it is abundant in raw materials for germinating grains for the production of beer products. Maltose has the least sweetness compared to the other two disaccharides. And this sugar is produced when we combine two units of glucose through the process of condensation reaction. We have here two examples of glucose, the hydrogen from this glucose and the hydroxyl from this glucose will combine to form water, will be expelled, and the oxygen and the carbon will bond together to form a glycosidic bond to form your maltose. Moving on to the last type of carbohydrates, we have the polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are named as such because it is a combination between multiple sugar units via glycosidic bonds. Now, like disaccharides, when someone eats a polysaccharide and digests it, our body will break down those polysaccharides into monosaccharides before our body can utilize it. Since polysaccharides are composed of multiple sugar units, polysaccharides are often used as a storage system for energy and for structural purposes. Polysaccharides can be classified as cellulose, starch, and glycogen. Cellulose is a major component of a plant's cell wall. And the function of cellulose in plants is to give its rigidity because we know that plants don't have bones like animals. That's why they need something in order for them to stand by themselves. Cellulose is a type of carbohydrate that we humans find it difficult to digest, but other animals can. That is why grass can be eaten by cows, but human beings, like we are, cannot. Now the question is why? The answer is simple. Because cellulose is a combination between beta-glucose. Cellulose are abundant in fingernail polish, food wrappers, films, and paper. Now this is the structure of a cellulose. So this cellulose is a combination between beta-glucose. Also, all of these structures here that you can see are all beta-glucose linked together. Now, if beta-glucose is something that we can't eat because it is made from beta-glucose, what about those polysaccharides that we can digest? And why can we digest them? What we are referring to is the carbohydrate known as starch. Starch is a primary reserve energy source 
for plants. And plants store them in their roots, tubers, and seeds. So basically, if you eat a seed, you are eating the, the stored energy of plant for its future use. Now, we know that we can eat root crops. Now, the question is why? Because starch is a polysaccharide composed of alpha glucose. Observe how the structures of the two polysaccharides differ from one another. If you have a combination between beta glucose, you will have a structure like this, and you have a cellulose, something that we can't eat. But if you have beta glucose, you have this structure, you call it starch, and we can eat this one. These are the food rich in starch. You have bread, cereals, pasta, rice, potatoes, beans, and chestnuts, and a lot more. So if you want to store energy, for example, for a long run, what you need to do is to store a lot of carbohydrates in the form of starch. So you can like eat large amount of rice at night before you go to a long run tomorrow or pasta. Now the last type of polysaccharide is the glycogen. But just to recap, both starch and cellulose are found in plants. Starch is used to store energy while cellulose is for rigidity, for structure. Now for us human and for animals also, we store energy in the form of glycogen and we store them in our muscles and liver. And since we can utilize glycogen, glycogen is composed of combination between alpha glucose in a branch form. Now this is what a glycogen looks like. What is the purpose of branching? Branching is utilized by our body in order to store as much glycogen as possible. Well, in order for us to have a source of energy in times that we need it the most. So that ends the first series of this biomolecule mini-series. If you want to watch the other videos, you can go to the description box and find the molecule that you're looking for. See you on the next video.